Thank you, Lynn. Um, that cowskin poem is one of my particular favourites, along with cat poem, as you know. And the video, I highly recommend you watch on YouTube. It's beautiful. It's a, it's a beautiful piece, um, almost portrait-like. But oh, wow! So, and thank you for reading my poem. I haven't read that anywhere. Yeah, thank you. And for all three, in fact. Oh, look at the way I'm brandishing this star. <laughs> this weight or place crooked. Who knows? No, I'm not. It is time for the first feature, which is really, really, really exciting because it's Michael Reynolds giving a retrospective of Grant Caldwell. I don't know who in this room knows much about Grant Caldwell nothing, or has heard his stuff. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, Grant's been around for like, forever, hasn't he? Grant's been around forever. Um, he, he prefers to be called Grant by the way. Uh, I'm quite right. He's, <laughs> he, yes. Proper English. He has eight, eight poetry books, four novels, I think, and he teaches at Melbourne University. Um, he's intelligent, droll. Oh, there's so many things you could say about Grant Corbell. Um, and I even have a poem in my book about him still in pens. So, yes, he's, he's an amazing writer and I, I, I cannot do him justice without writing it on a piece of paper, honestly. So it's very, very exciting that uh, Michael Reynolds has chosen to recite something of Grant. He's, I know that Michael has been rehearsing and so some will be recited and some will be read, I'm assuming, which is very, very good. I know that when a retrospective puts in so much effort, <laughs> and that's, that's the thing about the retrospective that is so wonderful. Uh, you learn something and you have a good time and you see a different perspective on a writer. So, you know, which is why I love it so much and encourage people to read their own poems as well as somebody else's and I think that's cool. So, Without any further ado, we have Mark Reynolds, reading Grant Caldwell. Well, it's actually, uh, yeah, thank you very much, um, Lish, for asking me to do a retrospective, and it is actually such a, a, a pleasure and honour, uh, not just to, uh, to read here, but to read the work of um, Grant Caldwell. Um, in the past, I've, you know, I've, I've done um, um, a uh, 19th century English Victorian poet. I've, I've done uh, Yevgeny Yevtushenko, the Russian poet. But this time, it's a local poet. So I, I absolutely uh, pray that uh, I, I do him justice. And I, to be honest, I don't even know if he knows that I'm doing it. <laughs> so I haven't been able to contact him. I haven't him. checked since so I emailed him. He'll be thrilled. But my, my, uh, my reason for, um, for thinking about him in the first place is um, a few weeks ago I found one of his books. Uh, this one was published in, um, in the early 90s. Um, and um, it was in, yeah, in, in a second-hand shop, and uh, it's actually got a um, stamp in it from the Melbourne University Library. Now, he taught poetry at Melbourne University, and for the Melbourne Uni to get rid of his poetry um, is just, yeah, it's not on in, um, in, in my books. Um, his, his work really, really has to be um, kept out there, and, um, being uh, be, being one of the um, being one of the pub slash street poets of the 1980s and 90s, and actually teaching poetry um, at university as well is um, is uh, very very rare. Uh, himself, um, Kevin Brophy, those those were the days where um, where academics actually encouraged students to um, to go mm. to pubs to listen to poetry, and um, so. Uh, so yeah, this is uh, 
Mrs. Grant Caldwell, and I'll um, I'll read um, I'll read um, his poems in uh, chronological order. The first book um, is that I've got is the uh, the Nun or Sun Ah, uh, hold it up. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> hold, hold up again. Ah, uh, lovely. Thank you. <clears throat> <laughs> And uh, it's <coughs> yeah, the old cat and rope trick. The cat is tied to the rope. The rope is tied to the stair. The rope is tied to the cat. The cat is tied to the stair. The stair is tied to the building. The building is tied to the street. The building is tied to the stair. The stair is tied to the street. The street is tied to the city. The cat is tied to the universe. The cat twists the rope around the stair. <laughs> Uh, this book is the life of a pet dog. Every I, I noticed, um, I noticed every single one of these books. I've got five Grant Caldwell books, and I noticed the other day that um, that they're all first editions. <laughs> oh, so uh, yeah, there you go. Uh, this one is from oh, this one's from uh, 1992. So I think that's 1991. Um, and this is this is one that was um, that he dedicated to Jazz H Duke. Um, so, um, and um, Jazz H Duke passed away in 1992. This one's called Dear Reginald. <coughs> Dear Reginald, I am writing to thank you for the lovely transistor radio you kindly sent me. It is all the more wonderful that an absolute stranger like yourself should remember an old lady like me. I am 80 years of age and have been in this home for 10 years. We are kindly treated, but the lonely hours are hard to bear. My roommate, Mrs. Jones, has a radio, but will never let me listen to it, and even switches it off when I come into the room. Well. Now I have one of my own. My son is very nice and comes to see me once a month, but I know he only visits me out of a sense of duty. This is why your gift is all the more wonderful and thrilling to me as it was given out of compassion for a fellow human being. Bless you. Today, Mrs. Jones's radio went wrong and she asked if she could listen to mine. I told her, to fuck off. <laughs> Yours sincerely, Alice Stockley. <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> Reincarnation explained. Always remember, if you come back as a cockroach, it'll only be for a couple of weeks. <laughs> uh, okay. Oh, there's a couple of others from this book. I'm not sure if I've got uh, bookmarks in. Oh, yes, I do. Okay, this one's this one's called Paradise. The man is concentrating his whole attention on the rope under his feet, straining to lift himself from the hole he jumped into to get the rope. <laughs> <laughs> Did you shut the door? The man downstairs slams his door. I get up, go to the window, lean out, did you shut the door? <laughs> hey, he says. I said, did you shut the door? What do you mean, he says, glancing at the door. I mean, did you shut the door? I, said. Oh, I think so, he says. But he looks puzzled and he looks at the door again. Oh, good, 
I say, and I shut the window and go and sit down again. It's not until 10, 20, maybe more seconds later, I hear him walk off up the path. <laughs> <laughs> okay. From his book, uh, you know what I mean. I've uh, got a couple of uh, poems from this one. <clears throat> and the first one is the title poem of this book, You Know What I Mean. He came around to my Darlinghurst rooms and we had a joint and talked about art and bullshit for a while. Then he told me his idea for a performance he was doing at the basement that was coming Saturday. He was going to get a live sheep and slaughter it in a bathtub, just cut its throat and watch the blood fill the bath. What do you think, he said. I looked at him. He had this half-mad grin on his face. The only problem is, he said, suddenly serious, I don't know if I'll be able to get a sheep. <laughs> I changed the subject then and pretty soon it got onto music and he asked me if I'd noticed how the words of the latest Men at Work song were really a message to him warning him that they were out to get him. <laughs> For what he knew. Knew about what? I asked. I can't tell you, he said, but you know what I mean. I looked at him. Yes, I said, I know what you mean. And it's true, I did and I do. <laughs> Democracy. Man threw ball. Dog ran. Dog barked, ball hit, dog's nose, dog slid, dog barked, dog ran, dog caught ball, dog sat, man called dog, dog sat, man shouted, dog sat, man walked, man stopped, man yelled, dog sat, man walked, man grabbed dog. Dog cowered. Man hit dog's head. Dog yelped. Man grabbed ball. Man threw ball. Dog ran. Dog caught ball. Dog sat. Man waited. Man yelled. Dog sat. Man walked. Man grabbed ball. Man left park. Dog followed. Uh, this one uh, from um, from the year 2003, Dreaming of Robert De Niro, and um, I'll start with the first. Uh, I'll start with the title poem of this um, book, Dreaming of Robert De Niro. Robert De Niro and I are in a cafe. Is showing me how to punch holes in the wall and I'm doing okay. We've already punched a few holes in the wall. And then there are five other men in the dark light talking to him, but looking at me from under their hats. I've got my silver pistol out wrapped in the silk handkerchief in my lap. And one of the men with the hats aims his gun at me and fires, but I beat him to the draw, shooting him dead, and the other one against the wall, I shoot him too before he can fire. The other men call a halt to things then. They say I'm okay. <laughs> and Robert De Niro says, he told them I was okay, and they said, yeah, well, we just have to find out for ourselves. <laughs> then they're gone. And Robert De Niro and I punch a few more holes in the wall. <laughs> Paradise 1, 2, 3. 1. When someone is in a hole, people come to the edge and yell, Hey, get out of that hole. 2. 
when someone is in a hole and people come to the edge and yell down, hey, get out of that hole, they don't get too close in case they fall in two. This is very reasonable. Three, when someone is in a hole and people come to the edge and yell, hey, get out of that hole, and the person asks for some rope and throw a length down and walk away shaking their heads. <laughs> Sonnet of Evangelism Outside the newsagent, I came across two school kids jumping up and down and spitting on one of M's poetry signs chalked on the pavement, and I thought about all the people who have contributed to their resentment. Coming back later, I spat on it myself. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm, I'm not talking. Uh, oh, sorry, I'm not. I, I, I won't say. I won't say who M is. Um, I usually. I usually say to people, um, I'll give you his um, initials, and then I say the entire name. Um, <laughs> um, but he used to graffiti the word poetry all over Brunswick and Coburg and Fitzroy, and uh, I, I, I've even written a. Um, Piece myself about one of his um, one of, one of his um, poetry signs, one of his artwork. Here, yeah. uh, this one is uh, "People You Do Not Know." You catch the tram. You look at the other passengers who you do not know. You get off the tram at the park. You sit under a tree in the sun and watch the people you do not know. You walk through the park and look at the houses of the people you do not know that look onto the park. You walk to the shops and watch the people you do not know parking their cars and shopping. You buy food and groceries from people you do not know. You catch another tram back to your street with people you do not know. You get off the tram and walk to your house passing some of your neighbours who you do not know. You enter your house and find some letters from people you do not know. You write, not here, please return on them. You make some dinner and turn on the TV and watch some people you do not know. Later you read a book about some people you do not know and you go to bed and dream about some people you do not know. And in the morning when you wake, you don't remember anything about them. <laughs> Been on the phone. G'day. How are you? How was it? The thing? Uh huh. Yeah? Oh, yeah. Not much. <laughs> Not much. Nothing. Nah, at home. What are you up to? Who's there? Just you? What you doing? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well. Hmm. <laughs> so are you planning on moving today? You want to meet me there? How do I get there? Is? Yeah. Yeah. What? So, what do you want to do? <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, just keep that. So, what are you doing? Nothing. So, fair enough. So, I'll come over in an hour or something? Bullshit, half an hour. <laughs> Bus, which, okay, see you then. No, I'm just going to have a piece of toast and wash my face and shit. <laughs> hey, hey, what's that? No. I've just never heard you say that before. <laughs> okay. See you in a while. Yeah, see ya. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, just one more. And people say, why does this happen? 
That's the name of the poem. <laughs> People say, why does this happen? What does it mean? And what will happen next? And next? And will we cope? How will we cope? And who will help? Will anyone help us? Will we need help? Why will we need help? What is going to happen? And why? Why does it? Why does it happen? What does it mean? And what is it all? What is it supposed to mean? And if so, what? What is it? And why isn't it clearer? Why does it happen this way and not another? And if another, would, would it be the result? Would the end result be, does anyone ever end? And people say, why does this happen? And people say, why does this happen? What does it mean? And what will happen next? And next, and will we cope? How will we cope? And who will help? Will anyone help us? Will we need help? Why will we need help? What is going to happen? And why? Why does it? Why does it happen? What does it mean? What does it all? Is it supposed to mean anything? And if so, what? What is it? And why isn't it clearer? Why does it happen this way? And not another. And if another, it would be. Would the result be? Would the end result be? Does anyone ever end? Is death an end? It must surely be such a relief. But why do we resist it? So why are we so scared? Is it because we don't know? Is that what keeps us going? What keeps us together? Keeps us sane for the sake of our sanity? Are we normal? Are we immortal? Would we be mad? Do mad people think they're immortal? They too must wonder why things happen and what will happen next or next to next. And will they cope? Will we cope? Will we all cope? Will any of us cope? Will we know if others are coping when we are not? And how will we know if they are coping in any ways? Coping an answer or just a way of getting through it? Why don't I just sit here and do nothing? Wouldn't that be easier? Would they leave me alone? Then I would leave myself alone. Would I go crazy with boredom? What is boredom anyway? What would happen if I did? Is that too much to ask? <laughs> Thank you very, very much for listening. Thank you. Cheers.